What about SE25 concerning health protocols for overseas travel during the COVID-19 pandemic? I'm going to explain what is there and what you don't need to worry about. And the big story, gasoline prices have gone up across Indonesia and there are going to be repercussions. And how is that going to affect you? Don't go away. Selamat pagi. Yes, it's still morning. Almost the end, almost the end, but not quite yet. What is the weather like today? It is hot already, 31 degrees at 9.30 in the morning. Humidity is 64% and the wind speed is 4.5 kilometers per hour. It is overcast, but still a lovely day and I hope it's lovely wherever you are too. Let's get started and take a look at the numbers first and good news there. National new cases down 2,764. Of course, remember this is Monday and so weekend numbers almost always down, but this is a big drop. National recovery 3,753. National deaths down to 16. Bali new cases, wow, down to 33. This is good. This is really good. Recoveries. 52 and Bali deaths, three. And continuing the good news, the weekly positivity rate down again, 9.25. So we are inching our way down. And mask wearing, not a big thing these days, even less and less in Singaraja. We carry ours with us in case we, we need to use them, but most of the time, well, it's just kind of a thing of the past. Okay, so let's take a look at the first story, which is about SE25. And thanks for the comments about the new setup here. I appreciate people saying that, you know, it's okay, it's good, uh, because it is helpful for me to have this big screen here. Let's take a look at SE25 and see what's here, because I think a lot of people like me, they heard a new SE, now what? Uh, but there is not really much here. And Certainly nothing that is going to affect people coming in, foreigners coming in. I will keep the graphics here on so you can see exactly what's going on. So this is SE Task Force number 25, 2022, concerning health protocols for overseas travel during COVID-19 pandemic. Foreign travel actors here abbreviated as PPLN or Indonesian citizens or foreigners who have traveled from abroad in the last 14 days. And so this is effective the 31st, a few days ago by now. Uh, until the time specified or replaced by another circular. And it replaces SE22 and the addendum. So first are the entry points, and there were previously 11, and now there are 15. And here is the list. I'm not going to read all of them now. And I was surprised Sentani is there. Sentani is well, a small place in Papua. I'm, I don't know why they've got Sentani there. There is an international school, or used to be, um, Christian International School. Then there is the health protocol, and this is nothing has changed here, so you have to wear a mask, and you're supposed to wash your hands, and you're supposed to keep 1.5 meters away. None of the stuff that anybody does anymore, or all of this stuff that nobody does anymore. So then there are the requirements. You've got to have a PL, and of course, that is another one that uh, is rarely checked, and nobody knows how to use, or very few people know how to use. A certificate of vaccine, you have to have a minimum of two doses, and so this has been going on for a while, and we've talked about that. If you have special health problems, and you have to have a doctor's statement from a government hospital that you cannot be vaccinated. And post-COVID recovery, exempted from the requirement for a vaccine card, a certificate, but you have to attach a certificate that is not actively, that you are not actively transmitting COVID-19 or a recovery certificate from a government hospital. Then you are going to be checked. And if your temperature is below 37.5 degrees Celsius, you're good to go. If you're above 37.5 degrees Celsius, you're going to get a PCR test to see how you are. And if it is positive, and you don't have a temperature and you have light symptoms, you will go to an isolation facility. And if it's bad, you're gonna to go to the hospital. And Indonesian citizens will not pay and foreigners will pay. And for Indonesian citizens, this is only Indonesian citizens, if you have not had one, two or three doses, you will get them on arrival, or you will get one anyway. 
and that that is it. Nothing to pertain to you foreigners that are coming in, or Indonesians in this case, either. And that next, we have the matrix of summary points of changes in SC Task Force on Overseas Travelers. So this is showing the difference, and you see in red you have number 22, and then in green you've got number 25, the changes. So the changes, as I mentioned before, airports now 15 from previously 11. And for Indonesian citizens who have not been vaccinated one, two, or three times, you will get vaccinated, and I talked about that already. All right, that is the second part there. And the third part is quarantine. And before there was quarantine, for two to three doses, no quarantine, and one dose quarantine for five times 24, there is no longer a quarantine. Quarantine is no longer a force, so all PPL ends after being detected having no symptoms related to COVID-19 and body temperature below 37.5 degrees can continue their journey, but it's recommended to carry out independent health monitoring. And that is it. That's all. All that's changed. I couldn't find anything else in there. These are the big ones. There's no quarantine anymore. Now, this does not mean people were, were getting confused because some people were spreading this false information that foreigners could come in with no vaccines, no vaccinations, and do a quarantine. That is not true. You could not. That was for special cases, not for everybody, not for you and me. Okay, now there is no quarantine whatsoever. You do have to have Two shots to get in. No shots, no entry. Simple. Okay, so 25. Not really much there of interest. Let's move on to the big story, which is fuel hike. Indonesian government officially increases fuel prices. Pertolite sold at 10,000 rupees per liter. So on Saturday, President Jokowi announced a fuel hike and... <laughs> It was done, and it was like, okay, here's the fuel hike, and it's going to start in an hour. The prices of Pertolite, Pertamax, and solar all have increased. The president said currently the government has to make dif decisions in difficult situations. This is the government's last option, which is to divert fuel subsidies. The Minister of Energy and Mineral Resources detailed the increases, and the increases are... Pertolite is going up from 7,650 per liter to 10,000 per liter. Big jump there. Subsidized solar going from 5,150 to 6,800 per liter. And the fuel that I use, Pertamax, is going up from 12,500 to 14,500 per liter. Increase of 2,000 rupees per liter. And so that is it. Fuel prices are up. You probably noticed already. And will this affect you? Most likely, if you are going to be driving, you're going to be paying more money. And if you are using transport, you're going to be paying more money. And prices of food is probably going to go up as well, along with everything else. And that is what the next segment is about. Fuel prices rise. Government prepares. BLT. Bacon, lettuce, and tomato? No. Nope. The Indonesian Consumer Society has asked the government to ensure that the supply chain for food commodities is not significantly affected by the increase in fuel prices. It asks for the distribution channel to be simplified and streamlined so that it does not become a cover to increase prices. The president said that the fuel subsidy would be diverted for more targeted assistance in the form of direct cash of one 12.4 trillion rupees given to 20.65 million underprivileged fan families. They will get 150,000 a month for four months. 600,000, not much. They will begin receiving that this month. President Jokowi said he didn't want to raise fuel prices, but he was forced to because of the state budget needs and the fuel subsidy for the state budget is increased, he said. It was in 2022, it has increased three times from 152.5 trillion to 502.4 trillion, and it is going to it continue to increase. The Indonesian Consumers Foundation, YLKI, said that the policy of increasing fuel prices is like a Samalakama fruit. It is not, if it's not increased, the state budget finances will be bleeding and will sacrifice other sectors. If the price of fuel is raised. The potential for a domino effect is very large, potentially hitting the purchasing power 
of the commuter consumer community, which is marked by high inflation. The executive chairman, Pak Tula, said he has given notes on this to the government and asked them to keep the food supply chain going in order to alleviate the price increases for food and other consumer items. The YLKI also asked the government to provide subsidies for public transportation and other incentives. If public transport fares increase after the fuel price increase, he said the rate increase will not be too high that way. He said the high increase in public transportation fares will actually be counterproductive for the fate of public transportation because consumers will not use it and they'll go to drive in their motorbikes. Pactula said that the recipients of the fuel subsidy are really people who have the right by name, by address, not like now. According to a study by the World Bank, 70% of the fuel subsidy was not well targeted because it is enjoyed by the middle and wealthy groups. And you see people pulling up in those big SUVs, sucking up the cheap gas. Well, not going to happen anymore, supposedly. Meanwhile, labor organizations have affirmed their rejection of the increase in fuel prices, and they announced on Saturday that there are going to be demonstrations on the 6th, that is tomorrow. There will be a demonstration at the DP Air Building in Jakarta and in 33 other provinces as well on the 6th. The president of the Labor Party said that there were several reasons why his party has rejected the increase in fuel costs. First, the increase will reduce purchasing power, which has now already fallen 30%. He said the increase will drop it down even lower and purchasing power will be down to 50%. He noted that the reason for this declining purchasing power is the inflation rate, which he said is 6.5 to 8%. And he said wages have not increased in the last three years. He said even the Minister of Manpower has announced to the government in calculating the 2023 UMK increase will again use PP362021. In other words, it's suspected that next year's wages will not increase again. The second reason, he said, for not accepting this increase is that fuel prices are being lowered in other parts of the world. And he mentioned Malaysia specifically. I don't know if that's actually true or not. Anybody have any ideas or any information on that? Leave a comment below, please. And in terms of the wage subsidy, he said 150000 for four months. This is just sweet so that workers do not protest. According to him, it's impossible for the 150000 rupees to cover the price increase due to skyrocketing inflation. So for all these reasons, on the 6th, there are going to be demonstrations and that they will be asking the DPRRI leadership to summon the coordinating minister for the economy, the minister of finance, the minister of energy and mineral resources, and related ministers with economic policy to form a special committee on this. If the September 6th action, he said, is not heard by the government and the DPR, They will organize further actions to bring up the issue of rejecting the increase in fuel prices, rejecting the omnibus law, and increasing wages in 2023 by 10 to 13%. And what about here in Bali? The head of the Mengui police already in action, and he said what has happened in terms of price increases, expect to see hoarding taking place and scarcity of fuel. He said that that happens every time there's a price increase. So officers are out at the petrol stations looking at queuing and people trying to buy extra gasoline to hoard. He said they'll be coordinating with managers of the gas stations not to sell to hoarders so that the fuel stock at gas stations does not become empty. If it is found that there's a deviation in the distribution of subsidized fuel which causes a shortage, we'll take firm action, he said. Things may be heating up tomorrow. We'll see you on Wednesday. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing so you keep up on what is happening in Bali and Indonesia. Videos are uploaded three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And what about some good news? China Air officially lands at Nurai Airport. Okay, I love China Air. I flew my last international flight to the United States was on China Air. Fortunately, I was able to fly business class and also got to fly one leg first class. Lovely, lovely. So after two years of inactivity, China Air is back in Nuraya. came back on Friday. It was greeted with the water cannon salute. The inaugural flight carried 136 passengers and it will serve Bali two times a week to and from Nuraya. 
They are using the Airbus A330-302 aircraft, and they arrived from Taipei, and travel time was a little more than four hours. That's pretty quick. Wow, if I remember the last time I flew to Taipei, it was like five hours or five and a half hours. Four hours is like Bangkok time. Well, I don't know. Anybody fly to Taipei recently? You know, I love doing updates on things, and you remember when I said the police chief said he was going to shoot people who continue to be bad guys and do robberies? Well, here's another one. Robbery perpetrators in mini market arrested, both feet shot. Okay, it's actually one guy, and he was. You can see in the video, they shot him two times. Usually they shoot the guys once. This guy they shot twice. And this story was big. I just hadn't reported on it, but it's been in the media for, I don't know, the last week or so. A guy who robbed a mini market using a machete and tied up the clerk and, well, got a lot of press. People were very upset. Where did it take place? It took place in Juku Umar, uh, in Dempasar, and the perp was a former employee of the Alpha Mart. The perpetrator was given a firm measure because he tried to run away and fight back, so they shot him in the legs two times. So he came into the store uh, around 6.30 in the morning and he was wearing a black shirt and a helmet and a mask, and he pointed a machete at the female employee, and he asked her for the key to the safe. He tied her up, and then he went and opened the safe up. He took out millions of rupiah, doesn't say how much, and <laughs> then he grabbed two cartons of cigarettes, and he destroyed the cable and the CCTV recordings at the crime scene and left on a motorbike. Now... This was reported, and he, apparently he told the young lady that he tied up that he had been an employee at the store before. Okay, this is a Darwin Award winner here. So the police tracked him down, shot him, and he is faced with a maximum imprisonment of nine years. He's currently in the jail with the Dempasar police. And one more good news story. Long life in the pool. There are blind dolphins and broken teeth. There were three Indo-Pacific bottlenose dolphins which had been kept in the former Melka Hotel up in Lovina. And they were taken when the Melka Hotel apparently went under. Nobody was feeding them. They were malnourished at that point. And they had been going through rehabilitation for the past three years, and they were released into the open sea on Saturday. The dolphins were named Rocky Rambo and Johnny, and this was a very controversial thing, having them there, because people were allowed to swim with them in the hotel, and it made some people livid, other people defended it rabidly. I'm not big on people swimming with dolphins in pools, but that was one of the things that they used to get people to come. There were a number of other animals there besides dolphins. I don't remember which ones. They were all eventually evacuated by the Bali Natural Resources Conservation Center and saved ones that could be rehabilitated or were rehabilitated. Because of a debt di dispute at the time, the animals did not get the proper attention and care. There were actually five dolphins involved at the hotel. Two were in pretty good shape, and so they were rehabilitated in Murdasari Beach in Sanur, and they were put back into the ocean, let loose earlier. The three who were in bad health and broken teeth, uh, one was blind. They were rehabilitated by the Jakarta Animal Aid Network, J-A-A-N. The founder of J-A-A-N, Femke Den Haas, explained that the rehabilitation process took a long time for the three dolphins. The recovery process was most difficult because of the need to restore health, but also to restore the dolphins' wild nature so that after being released, they could survive in the open sea. Ben Haas said, rehabilitation time was quite long because their health condition was very bad. Not only malnutrition, some were blind due to the influence of chlorine content of the pool. For a long time. There are also injuries to the fins. Johnny had problems with tooth decay, and this was rehabilitated. This is really fascinating with dentures. So JAAN had installed 22 teeth, 14 teeth in the lower jaw, eight in the upper jaw. The dolphin has dentures, and according to Den Haas, this is the first time in the world that this has been done with special technology and methods. Wow. 
fascinating. They were able to put dentures in the dolphin. As for the other two dolphins, they were undergoing rehabilitation for malnutrition and getting their wild nature back so that they could survive in the sea. And so we have three dolphins out here and one of them has dentures. Amazing story. And good to know that they're out of that pool and back in the wild and healthy, well, healthier than they were anyway. Since 2018, the use of dolphins as an attraction has been banned in Indonesia. And that is it for today. I hope SE25 has been explained. No worries, don't worry about it. Come into Bali, come to Bali. And if you are a J&J &J person, I read a firsthand account of a J&J &J person, had the booster and had no problems. Had one shot and then a second J&J, &J, no problems getting on any kind of transport. So that's good news. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe. And you want to watch a cooking video? Cooking videos, my West cooking videos are up here. See you on Wednesday.